hit record on this other camera and we'll get going. I'm going to do a little intro. <laughs> Hi there and welcome to Thrive Yoga and Wellness and Thrive Online. Today we are going to do an abs focused session. We're going to be all about the core, which is going to help to make our posture get a little bit better. It'll also help to improve our balance and it can also help to reduce some of the pain you may have in your back because the stronger the core is, the more support your back has. So without any further ado, let's get on to our backs. So if you have a yoga block, go ahead and get it nearby. And we're going to get all the way down on your back. Try to have your whole low back on the ground. And so let me lift my shirt up so you can see. When I first lay down, it tends to round. Try to tilt the tailbone down to where your low back's on the ground. So for some people, that might be neutral. For some people like me, it's a little bit past neutral, almost to like a big scoop because my back is um, super curvy. So exercise number one, we're going to get those bellies engaged, tilt belly buttons to spine, low back onto the ground, and just hold this and breathe. And if you want, you can take your left arm across the body to kind of stretch out that shoulder, but don't let the low back come off the ground. So we're still kind of working it. Go ahead, bring the right arm over and across. Keep that low belly button towards your spine, drawing in and up. From here, we're going to bring the hands all the way up in the air. And then bring the thumbs towards the ground, but only so far that you can keep that low back on the ground. So if the low back starts coming up, you've gone too far. This is just warming up across the shoulders and the core. You're going to drop them those thumbs towards the ground and then raise them back up. This is a little bit of core workout, warm up rather, and shoulder warm out. And it's just integrating the upper body in with the core. A lot of times that back likes to flare up. So we're just trying to keep everything strong and engaged. We'll do that two more times. And then from here, go ahead, bring your shins parallel to the ground and take that block if you have it and take it medium length. So not the super skinny part, but the medium length and have those shins parallel to the ground and <coughs> squeeze, 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 squeeze. So option number one, we're going to go for, let's say eight, where we just touch the toes to the mat and then lift them back up. And then if this is easy with your feet bent at 90 degrees, you can work on straightening the legs out a little bit. Um, uh, I think that was three. Till eventually where the legs are all the way straight. Don't let the low back come off. I'm on six. Seven. Squeeze the block. Eight. Good job. Now we're going to take that block out and bring those knees into your chest. I didn't give us much of a warm up today. Take that block back, this time on the skinny side, put it in between your thighs. Press those hands into the mat on either side like a Y, a y or this isn't a Y, this would be a T. Now bring the shins back to parallel to the mat. Now we're going to go side to side, but only so far that we can keep the shoulders on the mat and you keep the knees at this 90 degree angle. Maybe let's go six on each side. Keep both shoulders on the mat. So this is like an abs with a twist. And every time you come back to the center, bring that low be belly and low back to the ground. Does this feel okay? I've got two more. Bring that low back in. Last one. Good job. Go ahead, release the block. Bring those knees back into your chest. Give them a squeeze. 
This was a little bit more active for those side core muscles. Now we're going to bring our hands back up into the air. Those shins again are parallel to the ground. And then slowly start to roll up one vertebra at a time until your thumbs are up on either side of the hips. So this is kind of like setting up for a Pilates 100. And now what we're going to do is tap the left foot down, bring it up. Right foot down, bring it up. Let's just do six each side. Here's three, four. The further out your toe lands, the more you have to work. Five and six. Go ahead, bring those knees into your chest. Now we're going to play with some rolling action. So we do this in yoga a lot, and the closer into your knees, it can help you to get some momentum going. No hands is a little bit more difficult because it forces you to use your core. So what we're going to try to do is roll forward and back, but don't let your toes touch the mat. And if you need to, you can hold on to your knees to help you. Oh, my toes touched. We're going to do it two more times. Last one. Hold it up when you get there to the top. And now we're going to try with this really little ball thing going on. You can hold on to your knees if you want to. And we have options. What we're going to work towards, no hands on the, the legs. Extend the left leg out, in, right leg out, in. Now, if this is too much, hold the knees. Otherwise, you don't touch anything and you work the core. The lower down you send those legs, the harder your core is having to work. Let's do this for four more each side. Three, two, and one. Nice. Bring those knees in. Give them a squeeze. Now we're going to try. We've got options here. You can hold on to that. To, we'll hold on to the left leg, extend the right leg out, or you can let go of the left leg, or you can kind of hold yourself behind, like my fingertips are pressing into the mat behind me. First option is you extend that right leg out. My left leg is not touching the ground, so give it, go ahead and give it a squeeze if this is tough. We're going to think about five circles, one direction, two, three, four, five. Let's do five in the other direction. Remember, you can bring your hands to the mat, two, three, four, Five. Holy moly, give it a squeeze. Now we get to do that on the other side. Extend that left leg out. And if this is too hard, you can always plant that right foot. Totally acceptable. To juice it up, the right foot stays off the ground. You can hold that right knee if you'd like. Hands out to either side. Or it can be grounding behind you. Let's do five circles. Two, three, four, five. Other direction. Five, four, Three, two, one. Holy moly, bring those knees into your chest. Give them a squeeze. Now we're going to roll over onto our hands and knees into a tabletop position. Whew. Now with tabletop, we want to make sure that back is nice and flat. And now let's give our core just a minute to rest and move through maybe a couple of rounds of cat-cow. So cow's where you drop that belly looking down. Then rounding through the spine, go ahead and look up. Let's do that one more time. And back down to that cat. Now we're going to come to stillness. From here, we're going to play with a little bit of plank, some variations to plank perhaps. So slide those knees out. Option is to stay here on your knees, totally acceptable. If you want to juice it up, you can come up here to the toes. Now we're going to try to take, without letting your hips move, try to keep the hips stable. We're going to try to take the right hand to the left shoulder, hold it. Set it down. Left hand to right hold, shoulder, hold it. Set it down. Do it again. Right to left. Hold. Down. Left to right. Hold. Down. Two, three more. Right to left. Hold. Down. Left to right. Hold. Down, two more with as little movement as possible in your hips. Last one. 
Awesome. Now we're going to make it a little more dynamic. Come to your right forearm, left forearm. Right hand, left hand. Left forearm, right forearm. Left hand, right hand. Whoa, I think I was supposed to do right forearm first, but I mixed it up. So let's keep going. Two more. Last one. Hold it here on your forearms. Now we're going to get the shoulders involved, so don't let your bottom sneak up now that we're getting tired. Keep that bottom down. We're going to move our noses forward, back, forward, back. So it's like you're pushing forward on your toes. That's three. We're going for ten. Four, five, six, seven, two more, eight, nine, ten. Now all the way down to your belly. Holy moly, good morning. So let's catch our breaths just for a moment. Bring your hands in line with your chest, elbows in, tops of the feet on the mat. Press your pubic bone into the mat, especially if you feel low back pain. The more you press the front of your pelvis into the mat, the less um, stress you'll have in the low back. Squeezing the elbows in, lifting the chest up. So we're gonna use the back body to build some heat. But the belly button's still towards your spine. Go ahead, bring your forehead down. Maybe windshield wiper those legs. From here, we're going to, we have options. You can have the toes stay there on the ground if you'd like, or you can lift them up. Now we're going to take the hands out wide to a T and lift up, like we're being Superman flying through the air, right? Now we're going to make it dynamic for five. Bring it up to a Y. Back to a T. Y, T, squeeze. Y, T, squeeze those arms back as much as you can. Y, and back. Y, back. Last one, Y, back. Now give those um, in between the shoulder blade area, those deltoids, a squeeze. Try to lift up for five, four, three, two, one. Go ahead, set it down. Windshield wiper the legs. Now hopefully your belly's nice and relaxed now that the back's done the work for a minute because we're about to charge it up again. So plug those toes into the ground. Lift the quads off the ground. That's how engaged those quads are. Squeeze the elbows in. Tilt the tailbone down. Looking forward so ever so slightly. Inhale. Think to yourself you can do this. Exhale. Push yourself up. High plank. Then go into your very first downward facing dog. Whoo. We Okay, from here, if your wrists are bothering you, you can come to your forearms, always an option. Or if your wrists are okay, we're going to stay here in downward facing dog. Then we're going to roll ourselves forward into plank. So from here, hover those right knees, then the left knee, right knee, left knee for five. Right, left, right, left, last one, right. Now bring the left down to meet the right. So those knees are hovering. Now we're going to play almost like you're playing with a, a toddler, and we're going to swing our knees side to side. Knees over to the right, back to center, over to the left, center, right, center, left, center, right, center, left, center. Two more, right. Left, right, left. Come back to center. Go to your downward facing dog. Ooh, Nelly. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit more side to side action. So I'm going to come forward into my high plank. Then I'm going to go down to my forearms. You can stay here in plank if you'd like to, or you can do hip dips. Yogi's choice. Right hip down, up. Left hip down, up for eight. This is, that was two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nice. Go ahead, come all the way down to your belly. Bring your hands flat onto the ground. Elbows are just in front of those shoulders. Press the pubic bone back into the ground. Here is a 
little bit of a back bend, a nice sphinx pose. Catch your breath, or I have to. Okay, from here, take your hands back and try to clasp them behind your back. We're going to pull the hands towards the heels, lifting the heels up for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Set it down. Whew. All right, last few exercises. So we're going to come into side plank, and we're going to bring the forearm down to the ground, that right forearm down to the ground. For me, I tend to turn my right hand in. You can do your side plank on your hand, but oftentimes that's really challenging for folks' wrists. So if you want, keep your right forearm on the ground. Your right knee can stay here on the ground with your right foot shooting out to the right, left hand reaching up into the air. Now, if this is easy, you can take that right knee off the ground and stack your feet, or you can have your feet one on top of the other. We're going to dip it down again for eight, seven. So even if you're on your knee, you can dip. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Coming back to plank, over to the other side. Here's your side plank. Remember, left knee can be down. This is still side plank as we build up strength in our shoulders and our obliques. So hanging out here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nice. Coming back to plank. Walk those toes in. Here we are in a dolphin pose. Chest towards your quads just for a minute. And then go ahead and plant those knees down. Come to the tops of the feet, maybe. Take your hands, two fists in between the hands. We're not going to go for a full expression of camel. We're just going to do a small back bend to help kind of stretch out the core, which is probably pretty tight right now. So take your hands to your bottom. Make sure your bottom's nice and relaxed. Squeeze the elbows in. Push the hips forward. Rotate those shoulders forward. And then just try to shift the hips forward a little more and reach your shoulders and your head back. If you've got it in you to do the full back bend, that full uh, camel pose, which is where you grab your heels, you can. But you still get the same benefits hanging out here with your hands in your yogi pockets. For three, two, one. Go ahead. Come in, bring in those heels back to your your bottoms back to your heels. All right, so last little bit of core here. We're going to shift over to our bottoms. And what is a yoga class without some boat poses, right? Navasana. So option number one for boat pose is you keep both feet planted on the ground, spine is straight. Option two is you lift one or both feet. Here's that shins parallel thing. Option number three is you hold your legs out straight for five, four, three, two, one. Next option, lower those legs. And you see how my hands are grabbing the ground to help me lift them back up. You can also do this without your hands on the ground. Lower, lift, that's two, lower, lift, that's three, lower, lift, four, lower, lift, five, three more, lower, lift, Lower, lift, last one, lower, all the way down. Whew, okay, this will be the last, last pose. I think I've said that like five times already. So what we're going to do is make it be really fun like you're a kid on the playground, perhaps. And we're going to try to combine some movements. So you're going to end up almost in plow pose for yoga. But, but first, in order to get there, you have to go through canoe, then boat, then kind of like a shoulder stand, then to plow. So I'll demonstrate it. Hands on either side of your hips. Tilt that tailbone down, trying to get the low back to the ground. Lift the legs, lift the legs, lift the legs. Now lift the hips. Bring the toes to the ground on the other side of your head. Now rolling out. And as your legs go towards the ground, roll your body up. And then roll it forward. 
So let's do that full movement. That was one. Let's do it seven more times. Roll yourself back. Roll your feet up. Hips up. Over. Rolling it down. Slow and controlled as you bring your body up with the legs going down. Forward fold. That's two. It's like a little bit of hollow body action. There's three. Try to connect the ribs to the thighs on that roll up. There's four. A little bit of yoga cheat. Lift the hips. Rolling out. Here's five. Forward fold over those legs. Catch your breath. I think having my feet hit the ground disturbed my dog. She thinks somebody's at the door. Whew. All right. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and bring your feet together, knees apart, stretching out your inner thighs. And in this position, or if that's too much for the inner thighs, bring the left heel close to your bottom or your, your groin, right heel right in front of it. Plant that right hand down, lift the left hand over, stretching out that left side body. Inhale coming up, exhale hand to the other direction. Inhale coming up, plant that right hand behind you, left hand to the outside of that right knee. Sit up really tall, look over that right shoulder. Coming forward, other side, right hand to left knee, left hand behind you, sit up tall. Coming back to center. And that is all I have for you today. I hope you felt it in your core, a little bit into your shoulders and your glutes. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say. So you can go ahead, leave me some comments, shoot me an email. I can't wait to practice with you again next week. See you soon. Bye-bye. Where's my other? Oh. <sighs>